Hello boys, girls, gays, and squirrels. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about all the books that I gave up on in 2020. Do we have a quitter in the house? Yes, we do. Because I've kind of just gotten to the point where I'm like, I'm not going to continue reading a book if I just don't enjoy it very much because there's so many books on my TBR. There's so many books on my shelf. There's so many different things I want to read that I'm not gonna, if I don't like it, I'm just gonna not finish it or read it. It's fine. That's okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna like every book. There's so many books out there. Like that would be crazy if I actually liked all of them. I saw this video trend last night from books with Emily Fox and I was like, I'm gonna hop on that because I had a few books that I did in fact quit on this year that were just like, I was like, I cannot read these. So the first book I'm going to talk about that I gave up on this year is Swing by Kwame Alexander. I got it at Goodwill and I didn't like open it before I got it. I read the summary on the back and it sounded good, but I didn't realize that it was in poem form, which just, I don't always love that. Sometimes it can be really well executed. Can't get into it anymore. It's really not my favorite style, especially when it's for younger um, kids as well, which this book this book was more geared towards middle schoolers. It was about this young um, African-American boy and his friend Swing and like Swing wanted to be a baseball player and like find his cool. Um, I only got like 100 pages in and like 100 pages in literally nothing had happened. I was just really bored. I just kind of skipped to the end after like the first 100 pages and I just read like the last 20 pages. The ending was like really random. It just, it didn't like fit the rest of the book's tone. It was just weird. I don't know how to do this like without fully insulting anyone. The next book that I'm going to talk about that I gave up on is Please Don't Tell by Laura Timms. Oh my god. Okay. I've had this book sitting on my shelf for the longest time. I got an ARC maybe five, six years ago. I just never read it. It looked interesting enough, but I just, I don't know why. I just didn't read it ever. It's definitely not a book for like someone my age. It's definitely like, hey, stop. It's definitely for like high school maybe like eighth grade um i don't know even so like it's like I've, i always read young adult books of like them so that's besides the point but it was just really not good like it was not a well-written book at all I, the author i think this was her debut novel which you know good for her but <laughs> it, she didn't understand pacing like at all. Literally the book started it was like I'm throwing up in the bathroom because I'm hungover and then my friend knocks on the door and then and then two sentences later there's a new character introduced and then three seconds later not like another one and then another and like within the first 10 pages I mean we probably met like 20 characters and I was like what the frick and like and then the first 20 pages it was like all these different things happen boom 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 boom, boom. and it was like whoa, 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 whoa I understand wanting to start off kind of strong but it wasn't interesting things that even happened. It was like, and then we walked to class and then we were in the hallway and then we were this and then we were that. And it was like, okay, huh, hold on. Um, the premise was interesting. The premise is that a guy like got killed here. He died and they, people say it's an accident. People think like the main character did it. And then the main character is like getting blackmailed. And like people think that the main character did it because this guy did something to the main character's twin sister. and. I got like a hundred pages in that one as well and there was like 300 something and I was just like holy crap I can't do this. Skip to the end once again. The ending was like oh okay I'm fine. I'm fine that I didn't continue reading it. It was just like not well written at all. It's probably well written for someone who is younger and that's not to say like oh, like when you're younger, you don't have good taste, but it's more so to say like when you're younger in reading, at least for me when I was younger in reading, um, it was more so that I just wanted to like, what's the story, what's the tea? Like I wanna like, let's go, give me the deets. And that book did do that, but it just wasn't that good. 
The next book I did not finish was If I Were Your Girl by Meredith Russo, I think. First of all, apparently the author is like like abusive to her spouse or something, like something insane that I read about after I gave up on it. And I was like, you know what? I feel pretty justified not finishing this book. Yeah, so there's that. So this book is basically about a young transgender woman who like has to move from her home hometown to in with her dad who like lives down south because like shit went down at this hometown because she's transgender. The premise is great. We love the representation. We love relatable characters. We like these open discussions. It's all good. However, this was again one of the worst books I've read. It was just bad. It was just not a good book. It was literally like the definition of like telling and not showing ten oh my god it was so poorly written i can't believe it it was just so bad and maybe i'm being a bitch but it was just oh. Once again, it was like a case of not understanding pacing, not understanding how to show and not tell. There was like no good development of characters, it felt like. Oh my god, wait, my dog is being really cute right now. I want to take a picture. So then once again, I skipped to like the last like 20, 30 pages. And holy crap, I hate when YA authors try to put every single like social issue or any sort of issue all into one book. It's like, hey, let's take a step back. Let's maybe focus on a few issues and focus on them in a really good way. Not let's jam everything into one book and like we got it covered. Then we got covered every single one of our bases. This one is probably the most controversial controversial, I guess. Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I hated this book and I've read all the reviews and I know it's like, no, like, wait, like, you gotta stick with it. It gets better. It gets, I couldn't do it. I hated Eleanor and I know you're not supposed to like Eleanor. I get it. I do, but I couldn't do it. I started reading that book four times and I got to the same place every time maybe even like a little bit further every time and i was just like i can't do it i'm not gonna waste my time with this it was so bad to me at least i don't know this book is about a woman named Ele eleanor you can tell she's kind of socially awkward maybe even is like on the spectrum i forget if they actually said she was or not so when i was looking up like a picture of the cover of the book i actually found this really interesting article about um Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine and about authors who write characters that are almost exactly how most people would imagine someone who is autistic or like a someone who is autistic like they write them exactly like that but then they come out and they're like nope nope they're not autistic nope nope um and just about like how that's problematic so I'm gonna link that down below it was really interesting and I really think it'd be cool if you guys read it too and then she like falls in love with some rock star guy and then like this coat the IT guy like gets a crush on her I guess and I was like I don't know dude but it was just not um it was not it for me I could not get through it at all so I just said DNF I can't do it next is less so I should have known that I didn't like this book because I started reading it um, last summer in the bookstore. I had like the first 15, 20 pages and I was like, mm, doesn't really strike my fancy. So I tried again and I got like 35, 40 pages into it. And it was un like, it was one of the hardest like 35, 40 pages I've had to read. It was so just boring. And the only reason I got it in the first place actually was because I was at Goodwill and I saw it for like a dollar. So I was like, I'm gonna try it. So I did not like less at all. The next one, I really didn't give a fair shot, but you know what? It's fine because I just hated the way it was written. And that is the Roxy Letters. Oof. Okay. So the Roxy Letters is a book written entirely in email form, but it's only written from the perspective of one person sending the emails and that's Roxy, I guess. So boring. This character was so obnoxious too and just annoying 
So it's like, well, shit, if I had to like listen to just her this entire book, I'm out. Like, I can't do it. I don't even know. I got 10 pages in and was like, ah, make it stop, please. Yeah, I would not recommend that book at all. Last but not least, this book was the most like shocking DNF to me. But at the same time, I feel like I actually did finish it because the author was so goddamn repetitive that I pretty much got what she was saying in the first 20 pages. Like this could have been a, a book, like a third of the size that it was. And it wasn't even that big of a book to begin with. And that is Vagina Problems by Laura Parker. This book is good for the first five chapters. And then you can stop reading because that's it. That's the whole book. Because after the first five chapters, she just starts repeating herself in every chapter. Every chapter is kind of like a new essay written by this woman who has endometriosis and a bunch of like disorders having to do with her vagina that causes her to be in constant pain. Like every single day, days where she just can't get off the couch. It's really sad to read. It's really enlightening. It makes you realize that this is an issue that one in 10 women face in the US. You know, it's really important that we understand that this is an issue and we need to do more to figure out what is wrong with these women who have endometriosis and diseases like this because not enough research has been put into these things. And I'm really glad that Laura Parker like detailed the experiences that she's gone to because it helps people who have chronic illnesses feel less alone. It's really good to have the representation out there of women who are going through these issues. For me personally, I have a really hard time like reading detailed descriptions over and over and over of someone's like pain because I'm someone who like I'll get a headache if I start talking about like headaches, if that makes sense. I did have an incident like last year where I had a headache for legitimately five months that just never went away. I mean, it went away eventually, but like for months I was just in pain. So I totally under, not totally. I get some of the aspects of like the chronic illness where you're like, oh my God, will it ever go away? Will the pain ever go away? I feel like I can empathize on that level. And I'm really happy that she vocalized it the way she did. And there was also a chapter that I thought was amazing about like doctors not um, treating women's pain, like the way that they do men and kind of like brushing it off. I think that's really interesting. I've been doing a lot of research about that. Might make a video about it soon. Stay tuned. I thought that was one of the best chapters in the book and that was in fact chapter five. So after I finished that chapter, I was like, you know what? I feel pretty good about putting this book down. She pretty much like reiterates the idea like over and 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 over that she's in pain all the time, which is valid. I don't want to make it sound like I'm sitting here like, shut up about your pain already because that's not what I'm trying to do in the slightest. Just um, book wise for me, I was like, you know what? I get it. Like, I don't fully get it. I will never fully grasp what you're going through. But for me personally, I'm, I would rather put this book down um, proactively and actually do research about endometriosis as well and get a better understanding of the health aspect of it. That's just me. That's just me. Maybe that's because I'm not someone who goes through chronic pain or chronic illnesses. It's a good book if you want to feel less alone in your chronic pain, your chronic illness, anything like that. So I'm all about that, but it just wasn't for me after the first five chapters. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe my to my channel if you feel like it. I post content like this where I talk about books. I also post content where I get really drunk with my friends. It's a bit of a mixed bag in this bitch. So like, check it out if you want. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, I love you so much. <gasps> Bye. I'm Pablo. My name's